Hello, Mr. Thompson with lesson number eight. Quite a short one, but quite a tricky one. So make sure you pay a lot of attention, especially to the equation. Look at the examples before you do today's assessment. So lesson objectives. Be able to draw and interpret velocity time graphs was one from last week. Just a little extension, extra bit to that to start with today. Um, you should be able to calculate the distance tra traveled or dispense from velocity time graph. You did it last week by calculating the area using a bit of maths. I'm going to show you a method which is counting squares. Very similar, but slightly different. And then the main part of today's lesson is using this equation, which looks quite complicated. Come back to that in a minute. So in the spec, it tells you you should be able to draw velocity time graphs, determine the acceleration, and then interpret the enclosed areas, which is a displacement. The bottom one here is a new one. Measure when appropriate, the area under the velocity time graph by counting squares. So it's given you an exam on a bit of graph pit, a squared pit, where you can count the squares and you can work out the area from that and therefore the distance. OK, so here's last week's example again. The slide I showed you last week. To work out the distance travelled, you work out the area under the graph. So there's a triangle, it's half pace times height, 10 times 40 and half is 200. This rectangle, would just simply be 20 times 40 is 800. This triangle, half base times height again, half 10 times 20 is 100. And this one, half base time height, which works out as 600. Add the, th the four areas together and you get the total area, which is the total distance, 1700 meters. Okay, the alternative way of doing the same question is pick a square and work out the area of that square. So the area of that square is 20 by 10, is 200 meters and then you simply count the squares so let's go again you could just try and count them and work out the halves or we'll do it in sections just like last week that is actually one full square if you add the two sections together you'll get a full square so that would be 200 one square is 200 that's four full squares so that'd be 800 that is exactly half a square so half of 200 is 100 and then if you count the squares in this one, it will actually work out. It's three full squares, which is 600. Add those together, you get the same answer. The area under the graph gives you a distance of 1700 meters. You may or may want to make a note of that in your book or just make a note next to the work you did last week so you're not drawing it again. Okay, the main part of this lesson. I'm going to spend a little bit of time just on this one equation. OK, the, the spec says you need to be able to use or apply this equation. You do not need to learn it. OK, it will be given to you in the exam, so don't learn it. And the equation is V squared minus U squared is equal to 2AS, where V is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity, so it's obviously accelerating. And it does only work for uniform acceleration. Um, and then A is the acceleration, meters per second squared, and dis distance is S in meters. So let's, let's have a look at an example. An object starts from rest and accelerates at a rate of two meters per second squared over a distance of 20 meters. What is its final velocity? So it's quite straightforward. Let's use, use the data, plug the data into the equation. You get V squared minus zero, because U is zero, equals two times two times 20. So V squared is 80. Don't forget that's V to sort of work out, that's V squared, sorry. So to get V, you must take the square root and it comes out as 8.9 meters per second. You should write that in your book as an example so you can see how you do it. The assessment is going to be a few of these questions, so make sure you do these first. Okay, here's example number two using this equation. This time the difference is he doesn't start from rest. So Steve drives up the M1, covers 30 kilometers, he starts at 2 meters per second and constantly accelerates during the whole journey at a rate of 0 0.001 meter per second squared. What's his final speed? So here's the, here's the data. U squared is 2 squared. It's 4. A is 0 0.001. Don't be tricked by the S, which was in kilometers in the question. You must convert that into meters. It's 30,000 meters. So here's the equation. If you put in the numbers, v squared minus 4, because 2 squared is 4, equals 2 times 0 0.001 times 30,000. So that's v squared minus 4 equals 60. 
if you add 4 to each side to tidy it up you'll get v squared is 60 plus 4 so v squared is 64 don't forget to take the square root so v would be the square root of 64 which would be 8 meters per second okay you may need to rearrange this equation for a higher paper definitely um, so let's have a look at different ways to rearrange it if you wanted to know what v squared was then you can just add u squared each side so u squared goes across to the other side so you get that equation if you want to know what u squared is then you can do a similar approach and it would be that if you want to know what a is then you take you divide each side by 2s so it becomes that and if you want to know what s is you divide each side by 2a you need to write these in your book you need to work out how to do them so you can do them without learning them but learn how to rearrange this equation so here's an example about what, how you might need to rearrange the equation. So higher paper, Sarah decelerates from 30 meters per second to 10 meters per second or a distance of five meters. What is her acceleration? So U is 30, V is 10, S is five. So the equation becomes this, acceleration is V squared minus U squared over two S. Put the numbers in, so you get 100 minus 900 divided by 10. So that would be 800 minus 800 divided by 10, which would come out as minus 80. So its acceleration is minus 80 meters per second squared. Remember, acceleration is a vector. So the minus means that it's actually slowing down. So if you are asked for the deceleration, the deceleration would be plus 80 meters per second squared. I know that caught somebody out last week. OK, let's just check the lesson objectives. You now know the counting squares method to work out the distance or the displacement travel, and you've had a practice at using this equation. Obviously, what I'm going to do now is ask you to do this assessment. So I've attached this worksheet, only five questions today, um, working through it just like the video. And if you get stuck, review the video, try the five questions on the sheet and stick it in your book or write them out, put them in your book. And when you've done that, there you'll have five answers. Go into the assessment on forms with a link and put in your five answers and see how well you do with the five scores. Good luck with that. Take some time and then you'll be able to move on to lesson number nine. Thank you for listening.